Introducing Multiband Gate from AIX DSP. Multiband Gate was conceived to address the common problem of removing bleed from drum recordings. With single band gates, you have to make a choice. You can shorten the hold and release time, which will remove cymbal bleed from the top end. But this will shorten the decay of the drum until you're left with little more than a transient. You can lengthen the hold and release time, which will allow the resonance of the drum to decay naturally. But this will leave room in the top end for bleed from cymbals and other drums. Multiband gate provides a solution to this problem by allowing you to target different gating amounts for different frequency ranges. In this way, you can completely isolate the drum from the bleed without losing the decay. In its default configuration, we find crossovers at 500 Hz and 5K. We can change the crossover frequencies by dragging them with our mouse, using our mouse wheel on the numerical display, or by entering the values directly. This section also includes a frequency analyzer, which can help us identify problems in certain frequencies. If a certain band is too loud or too quiet, we can adjust this by raising or lowering the output of that band. These controls directly feed the output and do not impact the signal level being fed into the gates. To get the most out of multiband gate, we need to understand what is happening at different frequency ranges that we may wish to keep or remove. If we look at our kick drum using a sonogram, we'll see a long resonant decay below 100 Hz. This is where we perceive size and weight in a kick drum. Ideally, we would like to keep this information. However, as we cross into the lower mid-range, we can see the decay time becoming drastically shorter. Placing a crossover at 100 Hz will allow us to send the lower mid-range to the mid-band gate. The intensity of the transient between 100 Hz and 1K is fairly weak, and the majority of bleed happening here is being addressed by the mid-band. However, above 1K, we can hear cymbals. If we look on the sonogram, we can see them sustaining far beyond the kick transient. This entire range will likely need an even shorter hold and release time. So we'll set the second crossover for 1K. Let's focus on the decay of the low band. We'll start by soloing this band. We can also mute or bypass each band as needed. We can even bypass a band while it's being soloed, which is useful for doing a quick A-B comparison. Since drums are transient heavy instruments, we'll keep the attack time short. Since we want the kick drum to decay naturally, we'll set a hold time of 100 milliseconds. This ensures the gate is held open until the kick drum begins to naturally decay. Since we want the decay to fade in a natural way, we'll use a release time of 270 milliseconds. This will close the gate before the transients from the other drums can sneak in while still sounding very natural. Multiband gate also features a hysteresis control, which decides the level at which the gate closes. When active, this can be used to prevent artifacts from dynamic sources whose decay may be chopped off too abruptly otherwise. The mid-band doesn't provide much useful information, aside from the knock of the kick transient. We want to keep the knock, and we want the mid-band to decay naturally. But we do need to close the gate before the toms and snare can interfere with the mid-band. So we'll use a shorter hold time of only 10 milliseconds, and follow it with a release time of 192 milliseconds. This allows the release of the kick drum to feel natural, and retain a sense of air moving, but it prevents the snare and toms from interfering. The high band is where we find the attack of the kick drum. Frequencies in this range have a much shorter wavelength, 
and the sustain isn't very prominent here. Ideally, we want the transient information to come through, and we want the gate to close quickly. Setting the hold for 3 milliseconds will reduce the chance of any sustain from the symbols passing through. A fast release of 4.7 milliseconds will ensure that the gate closes quickly enough to eliminate bleed from the symbols. From here we can use the gain controls to shape the sound of the kick drum. We can create a deeper sounding kick by reducing the mid band. Boosting the high band can help the kick attack cut through a dense mix. Multiband gate can be keyed from a sidechain input. This opens the door to creative and precision use. If you have drum triggers that you've recorded alongside your drums, you'll be guaranteed perfect gating results when using the sidechain option. We can use key listen to hear the source being used for triggering, which also brings up a set of high and low pass filters. When not using an isolated source like a drum trigger, these filters can help you zero in on the frequency content that delivers the most accurate gating response. Using a snare drum as an example, we find a corner around 7K where the snare transient is quite obvious. We also find that the transient is fairly isolated from the kick drum and the toms here. So we'll use the high and low pass filters to zero in on this frequency range, which creates an isolated transient for the threshold to respond to. We can adjust the floor of each gate, effectively turning each gate into an expander as a sound falls below the threshold. This tells multiband gate how far to turn down the signal. The floor of each gate is set to infinity by default, and each gate has a 100 decibel range. This can help reduce bleed in certain areas where it may be a problem while not removing it entirely. We can use this to reduce the noise floor of a guitar DI. High gain amp sims, just like their real world counterparts, have a tendency to lift the noise floor of the guitar up into the audible ranges. Gating that noise floor on the DI can sound unnatural in some instances, as the sound of the amp noise is sometimes a key part of a performance. However, we can use the expander to reduce the noise floor of the guitar DI before it gets lifted up by the high gain amplifier. Multiband gate can also be used as a three-way signal splitter. This allows you to route your audio to other channels where they can be processed independently. Output channels one and two are used for the main output of all three gates. The low band also outputs to channels three and four. The mid band uses outputs five and six, while the high band uses outputs seven and eight. This is automatically routed for you and you can use this feature even when not using the gate. For example, we have multiband gate inserted on this bass guitar track. I want to attenuate the frequencies that may be clashing with the kick drum, and I want to use different compressors on the top end than on the low end. The frequencies that are colliding with the kick drum are between 50 hertz and 125 hertz. I'll use those as my crossover points. After creating three parallel channels and muting the output of the main channel, I now have a fader for the sub bass, a fader for the colliding frequencies, and a fader for the mid-range and high frequencies of the bass guitar. Turning down the mid fader will keep the mid band frequencies from colliding with the kick drum's fundamental. From there, I can use different flavors of compression and saturation to solidify the low end and create a mid-range that sits in the mix. Multiband gate from AIX DSP is a versatile solution to your most common gating workflows. With a zero latency design and low resource consumption, it's effective and efficient enough to use all over your session. Multiband Gate, available now from AIX 
DSP. Download the demo today at AIXDSP.com.